everyone. I am here with Jen Mann. She is best known for her wildly popular and hysterical blog, People I Want to Punch in the Throat. Jen is the author of the New York Times bestseller, People I Want to Punch in the Throat, which was a finalist for a Good Reads Reader's Choice Award. She is also the mastermind behind the New York Times bestselling, I Just Want to Be Alone series, and her newest book is Midlife Bites. Thank you, Jen, for being here. Thank you so much, Annie. I'm excited. I'm excited too. And I just love your book. It was like you were in my head while you were writing this. And we just talked about that. So I want you to go ahead and tell us what inspired your book. Oh, man. So this book was inspired really by um, my own kind of midlife crisis, I guess. <laughs> So um, as we sit here, we're, I'm looking at my dates here on my, on my computer. We're, we're closing out January. So that means I have about um, eight more weeks left in my 40s, and then I will be 50. And a few years ago, I, we were about this time of year, it seems like, and I woke up one morning and I just had this crazy moment where I thought I had dodged the whole midlife slump. I had sailed through 40. 45 was really a breeze too. I thought, oh, what's everybody worried about? The 40s are fabulous. And then I got to 47. I was going to be turning 47. And I just thought, oh my God, like there's no way around it. My life is half over. Like I am half dead. And what have I done with the first half? Like I've wasted the first half. What did I do? Why did I watch the whole series of Friends three times? Like, why did I do that? Why didn't I you know, why didn't I write more? Why didn't I travel more? Why didn't I, you know, have more sex? Like whatever it was, you know, all these things. I looked at my kids. I'd always been a fairly competent parent. My background is that, you know, I came out of a, out of, out of the parenting world and writing about parenting. And I was a really confident parent, but now I was looking at my kids who were teenagers and I was like, God, they kind of suck. Like, did I do this right? Like, are they ready to go to college and be good citizens? I looked at my husband who I'd been married to, you know, almost 20 years at that point. And I thought I'm half dead, but yet I have another good 40 years with this guy. Like, is this what we're going to do? Like, is he always going to eat soup like that? And I started comparing myself to everybody around me and what they'd accomplished. And it just was this overwhelming spiral of just, I don't know, self-pity, you know, remorse, anger. I was so angry about it. And that was something I was like, why is no one else pissed off? Like, why is anybody talking about this? Why is when you see everybody there, you know, you're like, how are you? And they're like, I'm fine. I'm super fine. <laughs> you know, like we're not fine. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, my husband was out of town and I called him and I was crying and I was just really upset about the whole thing. And he always has really good advice and it's always, you know, go somewhere else to deal with your problems. It was always go back to your blog. Mm -hmm. And so he, I am a person who I, process my emotions through writing. Writing is my form of therapy. And so he's like, you've created this community over the years. You have, you know, a million supporters out there who read you. Go talk to them. He's like, because I guarantee you, you are not the only person feeling like this. And I was like, I'm pretty sure I am. And he's like, I'm pretty sure you're not. And so I sat down and I wrote a blog post in the middle of the night because it was the only time I had time at that point. And, um, I wrote this blog post called anyone else falling apart or is it just me? And it was a really kind of raw personal post. And I thought if I, when I hit publish, I'm either going to start a really good conversation or I'm going to blow up my humor career. We'll see. And luckily it just started a good conversation. So my editor at Random House, she follows me on social media and she read the blog post. And I think within a couple of hours, we knew that it was a really important topic. It just, it blew up. I hadn't blogged in years at that point. I had not put up a new blog post in probably two years and yeah. for it to, to take off like the way it did and to get the comments. And it was a lot of what you said. I think you're in my head. Like, yeah. what, what? Like, how do you know I feel this way? And I was like, cause I feel this way. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and my editor is, she's in her early fifties and she was, you know, she was like, oh my God, girl, this is your next book. She's like, stop crying and start writing. Yes. And so I started writing. And so Midlife Bites was born. And then I created a Facebook group too that night. Once the blog post sort of took off, I thought I need a space where we can really like talk about this because so much of it is, it's kind of personal and taboo. Like it's weird. Um, 
I want it to be more open, but also I I think a lot of people are not ready to just really air their like literally like dry vagina out there on you know Twitter and be like, hey, anybody else got this? Like, and so I created a private Facebook group and we have 28,000 members now, wow. which is crazy to me that we yeah. have that many people that want to come in and talk about everything from, you know, parenting your parents, you know, because that's the other thing we're moving into now is being squeezed in that where we are trying to take care of our parents and our kids and ourselves and, you know, to your dry lady bits. <laughs> yes. I mean, that, that's so funny that you talk about the medical problems too, because when I hit 45, I just started like, oh, where did this gray chin hair come from? And have I been walking around with that for like four days and nobody told me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's that like, kind of topic. <laughs> Well, I didn't even know car tweezers were a thing until I created that group. And I, I think one of the earliest posts was about, you know, what are the best tweezers to keep in your car? And I was like, why are we keeping tweezers in our car? Like for little, like when the coins fall down and we need to buy a milkshake, like, why are we getting the tweezers? And they're like, oh, because it's the only time you ever see that chin hair that shows up in the right light, you know, and that you're like, oh my God, I have a three foot long chin hair. You know? <laughs> and so now I have really good car tweezers and, um, and no chin yeah. hairs. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I it, I forget to look, but that's a good idea. I'm going to have to put some tweezers in the car. It's the best thing. One of my friends the other day, she made a TikTok about like young boys pulling up beside her, catching her, kind of you know, <laughs> plucking her chin hair. And she looked at her she's like, yeah, just you wait, sir. Like, uh, I got it. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, that's just one of the topics that we go through, the physical changes. But one thing you said that interests me was men go through midlife crisis differently than women. And men buy cars and women suffer in silence. And you, you are championing, championing, let's not suffer in silence anymore. <laughs> right. You know, I don't want to go out and get a sports car, although I did get a new SUV this month. So maybe, that, I don't know. No, yeah. I said the women buy Wranglers. I think Wranglers yeah. are our sports cars. Like yeah. you hit a certain age where you no longer need to like haul kids everywhere. Yeah. And so yeah. you buy a Wrangler, like go to Costco and start noticing who's driving the Wranglers. It's yeah. all like 40, 50 year old women driving those Wranglers <laughs> and yeah. they're always like tricked out. You know? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I think that's the one thing that we are getting, but no, I, and that was the other thing. Cause I, when I went on to sort of do some research, cause again, I process through writing, but I also process through reading. I want to read about this and I want to learn about it. And so when I went out and started looking around, it was all about anything that was geared towards women was how to handle your man's midlife crisis, how yeah. to handle your husband's, you know, don't, don't let him blow up your marriage ladies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm going to blow things up. Like, yeah. how are you going to stop me from blowing this up? Cause <laughs> I am miserable. Mm-hmm. And, and I felt like, you know, it was such a, like a midlife crisis is such a, um, it's just a thing of privilege too. You know, like who has time to just sit around and be like, you know, I'm, I have general malaise. Like, you know, yeah. and yeah. so I had that kind of guilt too, where I was like, I am not running from a dictatorship. I am not dying of cancer. My children are healthy. Like what is wrong with me? Like, what can I possibly be so upset about? But, um, and so I had to really give myself permission to sort of feel my feels and get through that process because I think there's a lot of pressure on women to just buck up that, you know, no, you know, you have a to-do list today and, you know, breakdown is not on it. (laughs) So so you go in the bathroom and you cry for five minutes and then you wash your face and you come back out and you get your shit done. So it was that kind of thing. And I thought, no, I'm going to wallow for a minute. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. I think we should allow ourselves, you know, the grace to figure out where we are right now and what we want to do with our life. And I mean, I woke up at 45 and I was like, the same as you, what am I, where's my life going? What do I want to do? And I think a lot of women at this age are looking for more purpose or more, more joy in their lives. Yes. And I think a lot of us, we have gotten a lot of our purpose and joy from our children. I know you and I talked earlier before we started this, that your your child's quite a bit younger than mine, you know, But like, I have one who will be going off to college in a year now at this point. And it's like, he doesn't need me at all. Like there is nothing, unless, you know, he communicates through Venmo requests and TikToks. Like that's all he wants from me. But yet I still have to like be around and be present for him and make sure that he has what he needs. But my purpose is definitely shifting and changing. And I think, you know, I was never one to have all my 
all my focus on my children. And I think that's helped a lot because I see so many, you know, like my mother in particular, she, you know, everything was focused on us. And when I, I'm the oldest. And when I was going off to college, she was like, really, we fought a lot those last few weeks before I went to college and we'd never fought. And finally I asked my dad, I was like, what is her deal? And my dad was like, she's just sad. She's like, things are changing. You know, you're leaving. She doesn't know what she's going to do with herself. And so she fights. And yeah. Um, and looking back now, I realized my mom was kind of, she was losing her purpose. Now she's found it again in her seventies, but it's like, it just, if we don't understand what's happening, I think we lash out in rage. Like ours kind of, I think women, we come through with rage and irritation and yeah. anger and a lot of that kind of stuff. And rather than sort of like, gee, I should take a moment and figure out why, why I'm feeling this instead. They're like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No, I've had those moments as well. So <laughs> you have a lot of topics in this book. What, what's one of your favorite topics? Um, I think my favorite topic in the book, it, there's actually, there's a couple that kind of dovetail together. Um, when I started the Midlife Bites group on Facebook, probably very early on, one of the questions was about friendship. And I think this is where I'm talking about too, when I say your, like your purpose, friendships, trying new things, all these things kind of all go together because what they were finding was, is that our kids are all in high school now. So there's no, there's no need to go volunteer at the school. There's no need to go work at the class parties or, or coach little league or all these things that used to kind of bring us together and be kind of our social life. You know, you'd meet the other moms and the other dads and you would sort of hang out together because you had your kids in common and things like that. And then as the kids got older, I mean, at this point now, my child, both my kids have friends that I've never met their parents. I don't know who their parents are. You know, I mean, I have kids in my, who come in my house and I'm like, what was your name again? Like, I don't know anybody anymore. And, and so, um, there was a huge, like, there's this drought of friends. You kind of start losing because everyone's sort of pulling apart and you're sort of realizing like, well, if our kids aren't friends, why are we friends? Like what's happening? And so friendship, it was a really big topic about how do I find friends? And especially the group started just like pre-pandemic. And so I think the pandemic has definitely amplified that because we are so separated right now and we are so, you know, alone, but but even before that, it was a, it was a topic. And so, but what I noticed was, is that I personally had gone through that too. Like I had looked around and thought, where did everybody go? Like where, what happened? And I realized a part of it was me that I always felt like I complained that I'm like, oh, you know, I don't want to put on a pant on, on a bra or pants and go out, but yet I'd get there and I'd have fun, but it was always sort of that dread of getting there and getting ready to go or whatever. And I, and so people stopped asking me to do things because they're like, well, Jen always says no. So why, you know, who wants to be rejected? The other problem was, is that I was really not trying anything new. Like, you know, Hey Jen, do you want to do this? Oh God, no, that sounds awful. No, thank you. I don't bowl, you know, like, you know, it was things like that where, and so I made a deal. This was a pre pandemic. I made a deal with myself um, that I would say yes to as many things and invitations as I could. Mm -hmm. And so like I went to galas and I had to wear like, you know, costumes and I went to fashion shows and tried to be fashionable. And I went and did stand up, and I did, you know, I traveled, um, by myself and I traveled with like girlfriends that, you know, and it was so interesting to like come home and tell my husband and be like, Hey, so I'm going on a vacation and you people aren't coming with me, you know? And he was like, <laughs> I'm sorry, what? And I'm like, and the thing I could say was it's research for the book. So I should go, <laughs> so, but, but that's really hard, you know? And, and it was interesting to me because so many of my friends, husbands, they go away, they go hunting for a week or two at a time. They go on boys trips somewhere. They go on golf trips and nobody says, Hey, where are you guys going? It's always like, Oh, well, he works hard. He deserves a break. Well, yeah. so do we. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I think that is a big thing. So I kind of wrote, I wrote a lot about friendship and how to make friends and how to meet people, because I think that was the thing was, I was like, when people would say, well, I have no friends. It's like, well, what do you do? Like, well, I, I sit home and I read. Yeah, me too. And guess how many friends I have from that? Like two yeah. that yeah. also want to just sit home and read. So <laughs> we, need to, we need to find something else to do. Like you're going to have to put on pants and leave your house probably. And yeah. I have lots of great friends on the internet. I love the internet, but I really think during the pandemic, I got zoomed out. Like I really needed, like, I really want to see people physically, but mm -hmm. then just like today I texted a friend 
And I said, I feel like I'm ready to go back into hermit mode. Like I'm good. Like I've had enough people again. Like I'm super good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you with that. Um, my daughter, I meet all my friends through her activities and she's in a lot of different activities and I have a lot of friends now, but I do see how they, as you, as they get out of those activities, they grow up, then your friends go away. Everybody's busy. So this is really good advice on, you know, finding other things to do to meet people. And you have to put yourself out there. You can't expect everybody comes to you. So, right. And I think, and you can't, I kind of would do, and I see my daughter doing this. She's 15. And I kind of see her sometimes keeping track. She'll be like, well, so-and-so, you know, I always have to be the one who invites them. Yeah. And, and I was like, and I get that. And I understand that. I'm like, but how often does she say yes to you? And she's like, well, like 90% of the time. And I said, so it could be that she's shy, that she doesn't, you know, she's paranoid that you'll say no, or she doesn't know what to do. I said, you are definitely like a planner. Like you have the whole agenda of what you want to do. And she kind of is like, yeah, bowling sounds fine. Let's go bowling. You know, like I said, so I don't think we can keep score. I think that's the other thing too, is I don't think you can keep score with your friends and you can't kind of, um, I, I think after, I think we get really caught up in that. Like, well, you know, I planned the last five things. Yeah, yeah. And if that's the case, then have an honest conversation with your friends. Yeah. Listen, girl, yeah. I am tapped. Out. I have a good friend who does that. Like she'll say, let's go to lunch. I can't make a decision today though. You pick it. Like I'll show up, just tell me where. And, but I would like to see you and I would like to eat. And I, but other than that, I can't make a choice. And so, you know, just be honest. Yeah, I agree. I think a, a lot of times we don't, we are not honest. We just shove it under the rug and we don't ask our friends when we should, we, you should be honest and say, listen, are you, do you still want to hang out? I haven't heard from you. And a lot of times that conversation does not happen. No. And instead we get in our heads Yeah, and we start yeah. overthinking the whole yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's just a recipe for disaster. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I love that friendship topic. I think a lot of women go through it, so they'll resonate. Um, so what has the reaction from readers been like from this book? Their reaction has been really, really positive. Um, you know, I knew that this was a big, this was a big departure for me. You know, in the past, I have, I think, five people I want to punch in the throat books. And I have like eight or nine anthologies. I can't keep track anymore, but they've always been very sort of parenting skewed. They've always been very snarky and sort of just like observational humor and things like that. And this sort of like, I had to like dip my toe into like self-help and I had to, and, and the uh, number one edit I kept getting back every time from my editor was like, this is good, but I need more vulnerability. And I was like, how about a dick joke? And she's like, how about vulnerability? And I was like, damn it. Okay. You know? And so I just like, I can laugh about lots of things, but it was really difficult to be sort of vulnerable, but I, and so I was nervous. I haven't been nervous in a long time to publish a book. And I was nervous to get this one published. Cause I just thought, Oh God, I hope people like, and I hoped people understood what I was doing because I think that's the other thing too, is like I said earlier, this is a very privileged kind of topic. And this is a very, you know, woe is me, you know, you know, first world problems kind of thing. And I just, and I didn't want it to come across like that. And I didn't want it to be, um, something that was sort of like trivial or whatever. And so I'm really glad to see that the, at least if anybody hates it, they haven't told me yet. Let's put it that way. So those people know well enough not to come to me yet, like yeah. come to me later, but I can take it later. But right now it's been really nice. I get all these emails and messages from people who are saying that um, it just, it's resonating with them. They're reading it more than one time. They're underlining things. I was like, nobody underlines my books. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> like I did a podcast the other day and like this woman held them and she had all these like colored tabs. And she's like, these are things I want to read again. These are things I want to like, remember these are things. And I was like, girl, like, it's just stop. So, <laughs> yeah, I, no, I get that because I listened to it on audio first and I loved it. And it was the My only crazy time I voice. Really, <laughs> no, I loved it in the car, you know, when I was going to pick my daughter up. So, and then I went and bought the book mm -hmm. because I wanted to go back and read it this way. And I was, I read your letter, the, your blog post that you put in that started the whole thing like three mm -hmm. times. Oh, wow. it, I just, I just 
loved it and it resonated with me. And then I find myself flipping through and reading different sections as well. So I think it is a very handy reference guide after you've done reading the whole thing. So. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, that's, that was sort of the goal was that I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be something that we could talk about and yeah. that you would share. And that's the other thing, the really positive thing I'm seeing. I'm seeing so many people saying one that they've bought it in different um, mediums so they can, you know, consume it differently, which is not usually how, um, I mean, I was surprised to check like audio numbers and things like that where really high that people are listening to it in the car or where they're doing their chores and that kind of thing. But then they want to come back and like read a physical copy of it. And so I was like, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And then um, sharing it, either I'm going to loan it to someone or I'm going to buy, you know, two more copies for my sisters. I just had a friend who went on a girl's retreat. She went on a, um, they went to Mexico. She was like, I'm buying, you know, 10 copies and I'm taking them and I'm giving them to everybody on the first night. And she took pictures of everybody reading on the beach and stuff. And so she's like, we're going to have our own little book club and talk about it. And so I love hearing that. Yes, that that's excellent. Well, yeah, it is. The, it's the perfect book club read. I yeah. mean, yeah, for anybody going through this. And then the other, I'm sorry, I just can't stop. Then the other thing is that I love hearing from, I have heard from several husbands. So mm -hmm. I don't have very many male readers. Like I'm. I skew very heavy towards females, but the few brave men who read me are lovely and they are not, they're the most anti-toxic men you've ever met. They're just wonderful men. And they have bought this book and they have read it. And then they're like, I understand my wife. Like I get it. And they're like, and then they're giving the book to their wives who have no idea who I am, you know? Yeah. And so I love the men. I love hearing from the husbands. Yeah, I when I posted uh, in my stories on Instagram after I listened to this, I said, put don't let your children hear this but definitely turn it up for your husband yeah. <laughs> because I seriously it is good advice if they want to know what's going on with their wife they should read this book well I think the greatest and and saddest compliment I got was on um, the night that we launched the book here at a local bookstore at Green Door Bookstore um, here in Overland Park Kansas and the owner of the store was doing like a Q&A with me and she's and I knew she was divorced and she's about my age maybe a little bit older and she said you know I wish I had read this book before I got divorced. I wish she's like, cause I didn't understand what was happening and he definitely didn't understand. And he's engaged now to a, another woman who's younger than us. And so she's like, I'm giving, I'm giving them the book so that when she hits her forties, they can be like, listen, this is what's happening. And I was like, that's so sad and yet great, but sad. It is <laughs> very know? sad. I know. Yeah. This book could should have come out earlier. <laughs> right. I was like, damn it. Like, yeah. so, yeah. So, and that's the other reason why I think it's important for the husbands to read it too. Like, you know, it's being very marketed and geared as like a lady book. And I get that, but mm -hmm. I do think it is important for the, for, if you have a lady in your life that you care about who's in her forties, you should read this book too. If you're a man. Yeah. It, yeah, exactly. So, um, you mentioned the Facebook group. Can you tell a little bit about that and who can join and what's it called? Yeah. The Facebook group is called Midlife Bites. Uh, we got the title of the book from the group. I was, when I was trying to figure out, you know, I, I quickly created this group on Facebook uh, the night that the blog post was going viral. And I thought, what can I call this group where I can convey what I'm trying to do? And so to me, Midlife Bites was, it was like an homage to uh, Reality Bites. If you're a person of a certain age, which was the age group I was trying to get to, because I was like breakfast club, like midlife club, like what should we call ourselves? Like, you know, as I was trying to go through all this and then I always have to have some sort of, I realize now some sort of violence in my titles. And so I was like, bites, you know? And so, so we, um, and so I created the group and I decided then that it would only be for females that I just felt like while there are men who are interested in this and want to, you know, support the women in their lives. And I appreciate that. That is what the book is for. That is, that's what we're willing to share with you in public at this point. Um, because a lot of really personal stuff is talked about in there and it's a lot of, um, and, and, you know, I wrote a chapter in the book about the first time I peased myself, which is when you pee your pants, cause you sneeze and, you know, and I did it in front of my husband and I was mortified. And I was like, I have literally like taken a dump on the delivery room table when I delivered my kid. And, you know, he has seen me at my absolute worst, but I'm afraid to tell him that I peed my pants because I sneezed. Like, what is wrong? But I realized that there's just, 
there's something about that, that it's like, you are old, you are broken, you are, you know, yeah, you, you know, you did something gross when you were giving birth, but you were giving birth, you were fertile, you were young, you were, you know, contributing to society. And now all of a sudden you're just old and you're just wetting your pants. Like what the hell, (laughs) you know? And so I think that that's part of it too, in that group that we talk about that and we don't need men to either cheer us on and, Mm -hmm. oh no, baby, I love your wet pants or, you know, comment and be like, Ew, gross. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just really try to keep, we, so we're keeping men out for now. Maybe yeah. we'll create a group for men. If enough men want a group, I'll create one for you guys or a mixed gender group where we can get all get together. But for now it's just for women. Okay. And I have about 13 or 14 moderators in there because it gets wild. It's a very, very active group. Yeah. And while we try to be supportive, um, you know, it is the internet and people, and we're hormonal and people have a lot of strong opinions. And so uh, my moderators are in there to kind of keep the peace as much as possible. Okay. That's great. So any midlife woman who's interested can just join. Right. There's a, uh, it's a private group. You can find it, but you have to fill out like there's questions we ask and then we let you in if you're, if you answer our questions. Okay, great. So if there's one thing you want readers to take away from this book, what would it be? You're not alone. That you are definitely not the only person feeling this way. You are not the only person who is experiencing these physical, emotional, all of it, you know, all these changes that are going on and that we just need to talk about it more, make it more normal. Love that. Love that. So where can people find Midlife Bites? You can find it at any bookstore right now. Um, And so if you have a local bookstore in your town, they may not, you know, have more than one copy or something like that, but they can always order it for you if you want to support your local bookstore. I know definitely, you know, Barnes Noble has it. Amazon definitely has it. Um, You can order it from me directly off my website, which is genmanwrites.com. And I will sign it and send it to you uh, if you're in the U.S. And then, and it's also supposedly it's international. I just saw the Portuguese version. So I think if you're in definitely like England, Canada, Australia, like they should definitely have it too. Yeah, it seems like it it crosses over to different cultures and different countries. Women are women. They go through. Yeah. I think so. I think we're all kind of going through the same thing and it doesn't matter sort of where you live, but yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jen, for being on Soulful Series. Thank you for having me, Annie. This was wonderful. It was so fun.